In this video I'll be showing you how you can build your very own 50 watt LED downlighting solution for your shed, workshop, wherever you need it. It's cost effective and it is super bright. So before we get stuck right into the build, uh, let's have a quick overview of what we've got here. So I've got a uh, LED driver mounted up top here. Now this is to run the LED from mains power, in my case 240 volts, although this is universal and run all the way down to 110 volts AC as well. Uh, we've got a deep cool CPU cooler, though really you could use any reasonably sized CPU cooler and adapt it for this purpose. Um, for the reflector, uh, we've used a stainless mixing bowl of all things. Would you believe I went to two separate hardware stores and couldn't find anything like this? And then I was in the shopping centre, saw this and was like, yes, that'll work. It's nice and polished on the inside, so it's going to bounce and reflect all the light around. Um, we've got a Epistar 50 watt LED module in there. Puts out around about 6,000 lumens of power. Now, or 6,000 lumens of light rather. Now, typically 100 watts of incandescent light is around about 1,600 lumens. So this LED is in the neighbourhood of 400 watts equivalent in incandescent power. So pretty bright all in all. A few of these around your workshop or shed would get it lit up very excellently I'm sure. So, let's have a look at the build. So, as per usual, all the parts used here will be in a build list down in the video's description below. But let's have a quick overlook. So, I've got here a deep cool CPU cooler off eBay. Uh, I've got my LED driver, so this breaks down the mains voltage down to the right current and voltage to run our 50 watt LED module here. I've gone ahead and bought an Epistar branded um, LED module. Um, we're going to need uh, some aluminium rod, or rather flat bar. Uh, this is 20 by 30 millimetres, and it's a metre long. You can pick those up for like five bucks, pretty cheap. And you're going to want to print out this cutting template. Make sure when you print it out, you're not uh, setting it to underscale or overscale the image. Otherwise, all the dimensions will be screwed up. Um, and what we're going to do is, after we've cut that out, you can see I've already done it here, we're going to use a bit of paper glue and just stick it to the top of our bowl or reflector. Uh, and I've just used a, um, a ruler to kind of roughly center that. So our first job we should tackle is actually cutting out the template. So we've got six holes that need to be drilled. These can be drilled with a 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Um, and how we're going to cut out the shape? Well, there's a couple ways we could do it. Uh, we could use some sort of rotary die grinder uh, to cut it out with a small cutting disc, um, but you know, not everybody has that. So I think I'm going to do this in a method where a lot of people are going to be able to do it at home, and that's with a drill using something like a 3 or 4 millimeter drill bit, and just drilling a series of holes uh, around the shape, and then once we've drilled all around it, we'll be able to break that uh, section of steel out, and then file the edges smooth. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. Right, so we've got that all drilled out. So now what I'm going to do is use a pair of diagonal cutters to nip all the little bits of steel in between all the drill holes. So I've got the bulk of the metal cut out. So now it's time to move on to some files to smooth out all the edges. Right, so after spending a bit of time with the file, I've got the base all smoothed out and uh, I've checked that it does fit the heat sink, which it does. You can see the heat sink protruding through the, the base of the reflector there. So I'll put that aside for the moment and let's focus on the heat sink. Now to mount the LED, uh, we need to mount it diagonally. Uh, 45 degree angle from the heat sink because uh, if we mount it like this there's really nowhere we can put any bolts to secure it so we're only going to use two um, but you know, it's not really going to be a problem for the application we're using for the LED so 
we're going to be using, of course, these two uh, mounting holes here. So what I went ahead and did was with a marker, set the LED on top here, uh, centred it, and then marked it with a sharpie, uh, and drilled those holes out to three and a half millimetre. So now let's move on to how we're going to suspend this above our workshop or wherever we're going to mount it. Um, there's a few options. You could uh, have four points where you put some uh, very fine chain and secure it to the uh, collector here. Um, but how I'm going to do it is using our aluminium flat bar is I've just bent this into a basic hoop shape uh, that fits the bowl. Now this stuff, uh, you know, it's only 3 mil thick, it's very, very easy to bend. Most of it can actually be done by hand with some of the finer detail like this arc here just done in a vice. Um, so, you know, depending if you use a stainless bowl like I have, naturally the contours are going to be a bit different, so just play around till it looks about right to you. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes through the, uh, the side of the hoop here and into the bowl and then secure it using some pop rivets. So I've just finished drilling the holes on the side of the bowl for the hoop. Uh, I'm not going to fit that yet because it will be in the way. Um, so now for a moment, pretend that this LED is mounted as it should be on the underside and the heat sink. And what we've got here is we've got a metal tab this side and this side and those are our power inputs for our LED. So what we need to do is drill a couple of holes so we can thread wires from the outside down into the inside of the reflector where the LED will be mounted. So just roughly, we don't have to measure this, mark a couple of spots close to the power inputs on both sides and drill those out with a 4mm bit or similar. And I'm going to be using some copper wire and you want some copper wire that's rated for at least 3 amp or higher. So now we can start bolting stuff together. So I'm going to start by taking my heat sink and installing it into our reflector. Now this is where our um, cap screws come in. So this is M3 and it's 10 millimeters long. And this threads into the pre-existing uh, threads on the heat sink. So I've got my four cap screws tightened down and um, now it's time to install our LED. Now our LED does need some thermal compound and you don't need to buy anything too expensive for this. Uh, and I am going to use a fair bit of it because it is a big old chip and the heat sink isn't very smooth on this. So uh, yeah, be generous with the thermal compound. So now I'm going to sit my LED module, or chip rather, on the heat sink. And we're going to be using M3 by 15 cap screws to secure it. And I'm going to have to go and put the nuts on the underside uh, on the cap screws we just installed off camera because it's way too tricky to do this on camera. Right, so I've just finished tightening up the two cap screws that secure the LED in place. So now it's time to run some copper wire to run our LED. Now, of course, LEDs are polarity sensitive. Um, so I want to make sure we get that right. And before I've installing this wire, I have just stripped a bit of the insulation back and tinned it so it makes it a bit easier to install. So there we go, we've got our two wires coming through. Now, I'm not going to be able to really solder this very well without blocking the camera's view. But essentially, um, on the LED, there will be a uh, small, in my case, indentation to mark positive and negative. And I've just highlighted that with Sharpie just to make sure I don't get it mixed up when I'm soldering them on. So I've got those wires soldered onto the LED module now. and now I can install the hoop we bended earlier. And I'm going to be securing this with 4mm pop rivets. So I've decided to mount my LED driver up here on top of the hoop. And I've just drilled a couple holes which uh, line up with the mounting um, attachments on the LED driver.
and while I'm at it I'm going to hook up my earthing wire so the next thing I can do is obviously I've got way too much cable here so um, I'm going to trim the cables so they meet solder them together and use some heat shrink to seal the connections So, I've got my LED driver all mounted securely, and now you might be wondering, what's the deal with these fans? What do they run off? Well, we actually shouldn't need them. Um, so, I'm going to remove them. Pretty easy to come off. They've just got these wire clips on here. So, we can keep those for another project one day. So, what I'm going to do now is I've got just a, a temporary power plug hooked up to the LED driver and I'm going to power it on and I'm going to run it for about an hour and I'm going to come back and then measure the temperature of the heat sink uh, as close as I can to the LED and we'll see what sort of thermals we'll get. So let's uh, plug this in using an RCD unit so that uh, you know, if anything bad happens shouldn't have to go to hospital contact oh the power and that is super super bright I'm not going to point it at the camera because it'll just blind it but uh, she's working so I'll let this run for now we'll come back and do some thermals so it hasn't quite been an hour but the temperature is holding pretty steady at the moment uh, it's it's pretty much stayed this way for the last half hour so we're sort of peaking around 40 degrees on the heat sink. Um, it's pointless me pointing the uh, infrared gun at the LED module itself because the front of that will be probably around 200, 250 degrees Celsius. Um, Epistylus, the temperature of this LED, or the operating temperature, between minus 30 and plus 80 degrees Celsius. And with the heat sink at a rather mild 40 degrees, uh, we're well within the parameters set by the manufacturer. So, by this point, if you've been following along building your own LED light, you should have a complete working unit. As always, when you're hooking up with mains power, um, be careful, you know, make sure everything's insulated, no shorts, and also uh, check your local laws because in some countries it is a illegal to just wire anything into the mains power without some electrical certificates. So do keep that in mind. Otherwise if your house burns down and they find out you wired something in yourself, you might not get paid out. It can happen. So if you like the video please hit that like button and if you want to see more builds like this along with a host of others do hit that subscribe button, I'm sure it'll be worth your while. Other than that, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.